Now this civic committee, uh, like I mentioned to Mike, and this is, uh, I believe, has uh, some significance too, because about a year after the house of this young attorney, Lloyd Tamron, was very young, and his wife, young couple in the early 20th, was he just came out of law. And he wrote a, a letter in the opinion karma about this committee being successful, and why don't we start a civic association? Uh -huh. So who jumped on that idea but Herb Lynch, okay. who was president of the Wesley Savings and Loan Association up here. He says, you know, you people are timing this right because I have this dormant account here with $2,000 and that's been there since, uh, like I say, maybe the early 50s, when, whenever they went out of business before. I said, well, I, I'm, I, I'm going to have to give this to the state. It's almost due now to be passed over to them for, for being dormant. Oh, that didn't, uh, didn't uh, discourage us from really getting serious about the Civic Association. Uh -huh. And Lloyd Tamman, man, he wanted to do, he wanted to put advertisements in the paper that we were going to have meetings and all this kind of you know, And he was, and, uh, and uh, in, in the selection of the initial group of officers, he was the first president. Okay. He was the first president. Alex Graves, the judge, was the first secretary. Uh, Bill Van Plant, well, Van Pelt, was the first secretary. He's dead, incidentally, gone. Okay. And his wife, I don't know where she is, she, she was a, and I was a treasurer. So we went on, and, uh, and then uh, after the officers were elected, uh, we organized my little committees, uh, whatever, in the Wesley Improvement Society charter, which, which dates back to early years. What do they call that? The Constitution. Right. Yeah, it's a regular country. And that dated back to the old, uh, to the pre, to the early years of the society. And so that so someone found that or? Yes. Was, uh, now, how that, or... that came to light, that Constitution, I'm very vague at right mm -hmm. at this moment. All I know is it came up with that. And so, the, so the, it was. The, the way it was so different from what it is today is because. The Constitution in those days divided Wesley into five zones. Five. That's where that came from. The society did become reactivated, and thanks to the energy of the officers, one of them who really was a key man was Bill Sharkov. He was assistant principal, and he was very highly known in the area because he also Besides being assistant principal, don't ask me what school that was, but he also had an assignment to lecture on Channel 13. When people heard name, oh, Bill Sharkoff, oh, we had the phone on Channel 13. Yeah. You know? Dysart, from Boulevard there, he, he was a principal. Colucci was a principal at 19. We had some, and then we had the, also a lot of other highly technical people, real professional people, mm -hmm. and poor little me who was just a, yeah, had initially about 200 at that time, and uh, and of course since that time, slowly, slowly, slowly it grew, 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 and uh, it's been uh, such a successful organization, mainly through the, the, the expertise of Bill Sharkoff, like people like him, who dedicated himself and all that. What were some really of the first things that you, uh, well, you, you tried to tackle? Well, it's interesting you ask that because that question came up almost immediately after we now had the, the officers and, and, uh, and the member and the committees. And the Thank first you. question was, hey, if we're going to really uh, uh, tell the people that uh, they should support us, we have to have an issue. <laughs> an issue. It's essential that we, you know, say we're going to fight for something, just don't collect dues. And it seemed like, I can't describe the incident, but that an incident had taken place where somebody was either injured crossing the street or, or some tra traffic violation or whatever, that drew the uh, attention of the, uh, of the Staten Island advance. And we said, now we're going to fight and we pursue this thing, you're pissed by the politicians and all that. And we were successful. We took such credit for that. Look what we did. No, they achieved it. In those days here, uh, Wesley was a really, really uh, simple and remote. When I lived, as I mentioned, in West Brighton with my, with my aunt and uncle in the 30s, if you mentioned 
worst for me. Ain't nobody can tell you. <laughs> no, really? I'm serious. Wow. And and almost this entire area from Woolley to Manor Road and down here was in place in 1963. Mm -hmm. There was a scattering of these little lots here. I held on to this. You could go there today in Wesley and almost feel like it was almost like it was. Uh, in 1954 or 1963, whatever date you select, it shows you how unchanged it was. And that was good because as the rest of that now went hang wild with the coming of the bridge, filled him on Highland Boulevard, South Shore, went up like a fire. You know, all houses built everywhere and anywhere. Little old Wesley remained the quiet little community that it is today. Uh huh. It is. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Quiet little community. Mm -hmm than it is today. I will be in this house here every day now for the rest of my life. You, know, you don't understand how enjoyable it is for me to have this lovely yard here with this. And I tell people, God, my yard is one of the most attractive estates in Westley. <laughs> <laughs> one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, if, if, you, if you did move somewhere else, well, what are the things that you think you would miss about Westley? I move? Yeah. If Gosh, you're talking to the wrong person. Right? <laughs> you couldn't get me out of here, no how. This, this thing, this is like heaven here. Yeah. Good answer. Figure where I came yeah. from. Mm -hmm. I came from the tenants. Mm -hmm. I'm Amsterdam, I'm here in Manhattan. And the town, the neighborhood that I lived up there has all been demolished. All the houses I grew up in, they're all gone. They all mm -hmm. new houses. And I came here with, with nothing. So, uh, and I came here, look what I have. I said to myself, where did I come from to, to get some? I said, I, if you would have asked me when I was, say, 19, 20, 18, when I was a kid living in, the, in these tenement districts there, shooting pools with all these Irish kids and, and horsing around and playing ball in the streets, and, and said, you're going to own a house in Wesley like you have now. I said, yeah. You must have pie in the sky dreams. <laughs> never, never, never would I ever, ever dreamt that I'd be living in a place like this in my retired life. And I say that with real sincerity. It's a beautiful area, very attractive. For new people that at Gorsha, I tell them, boy, you have moved into the greatest, greatest uh, residential area on Staten Island. And I say that very sincerely, very sincerely.